Okay, so on Wednesday or on Thursday, depending on what class you were, uh, we talked about confidence intervals, right? And we did the Hershey's activity, and we wanted to see how many of them landed on its base. And then we constructed an interval to see where the true value of P is. So if you remember um, from the central limit theorem, right, P hat is normally distributed with a mean of P and a standard error of square root of P, 1 minus P. So you can only do this if I know what P is, but I don't really know what the population uh, proportion is of the big population. So if this is the big population, I don't know what it is, right? I don't know what P is. P is unknown. So I take a small sample from it to calculate P hat. And P hat will be my estimator for P, right? So reality check, we don't know what P is in real life. So we use P hat to try to estimate it, right? Now, how useful is my estimate? Is my estimate going to be the same as P? Well, not really, because if I were to take another sample, right, I'm not going to get the same P hat. So you know that there's some error behind it, right? So let's say P hat was 57%. This is the proportion of Democrats that we have. And we got 446 people, right? Maybe they can be here in San Diego. We got 446 people. We told them that they were Democrat or Republican or Green Party or whatever, right? And we got that 57% were Democrats, right? So we don't know what P is. We don't know what the true value of Democrats, our true proportion of Democrats um, are in San Diego. We got our sample and we got that it was 57, right? So if I were to calculate my standard error, right? Now notice that I'm not using the regular P because I don't know what P is. So I'm using the P hat that I just discovered. Now this standard error, this is where it's really useful, right? When I plug in the value of P, a uh, P hat, and I plug in the value of, of 446, right? What I end up getting, I end up getting 2.3%. Well, what exactly does this 2.3% mean? Okay, well, this tells me, right, and I wrote it right here, this means that the, on average, we are 2.3% from the true value, right? So this is kind of an imprecise estimator, right? Because there's still some error. This, that's where the word error comes in, right? I'm still around, on average, 2.3% away from it, right? So it's not really a really good estimator. I don't really know what it is. So this is what we call a point estimate, right? And point estimates are not really great. They may be biased or unbiased, whatever, but um, what will be more safe is to get an interval, right? We want an interval of values, right? We want something that we're going to play it a little safe, have some sort of intervals. My true value of P, this P is going to be between this number and this number. It's a little bit better to say that, okay? So what we're going to assume, right, we're going to assume that everything is nice, right? Our distribution is normal, right? So we know that our P is going to be somewhere in here, right? Usually it's going to be in the middle because we know that it's the mean is P, right? So their P is there. Now, if we want a range of numbers, right? We need to have a lower bound and our upper bound to be able to capture this P. Now, this P isn't going to always be there, right? Because if I were to decrease my confidence interval, right, I'm getting closer and closer to it, but then P is now more free to move everywhere, right? So how do we do this? How do we calculate this confidence interval, right? So we have our level of confidence, right? I am either going to be 95%. 80%, whatever confidence I am, right? So how do we construct it? Well, this is the formula, right? So this is the formula that we kind of were using when we were doing the Hershey's Kisses, right? So we take P hat, our estimator, and we subtract it by this value called the margin of error, right? So this thing is what we call my margin of error. And it contains the standard error times this number, right? This number is what we call my critical value. Okay, I wrote it right here, critical value. Now, what exactly does this really do? Well, basically, this tells me, on average, how um, how far I am from the mean, right? Well, what I'm doing it, this Z, Z score tells you how many standard deviations I am from it, right? So if Z was 2, that means that, on average, I will be 2 standard deviations away from my true value of P, which is better, right? Because the more confident I am, right, well... It's good, right? I'm, it's good that I'm very, very confident. But the bad thing is that now my interval not got wider. So increasing confidence, right? So if I want to make this increasing confidence will also increase my interval, right? And that's not really what I want. I want a smaller interval, right? But that will decrease my confidence, okay? 
All right, so these are usually the ones that we really use. This is something that you definitely wanna copy down, right? Because it's, these values are the values that we're gonna be using uh, for confidence level. A 90% confidence level corresponds with the Z value of 1.645. A confidence level of 95 corresponds with 1.96. Confidence level for 99%, this is the 99, corresponds with 2.575. And a confidence level of 80% corresponds with a value, a z-score of 1.28, okay? So these are my values. Now, there's more to it, the derivation behind where did this formula come from. Um, don't worry about it, just know how to use it for now, okay? So um, this is definitely copy this down because this will let you know what your values of Z are. I'm usually going to give you these three. This is the one that we did in the activity, right? But this is basically what we're going to be using. Okay. So let's do an example. Okay. Let me show you an example. So this is the same example that we were kind of doing for the central limit theorem. So this says, recall that Morse code, that Morse believed the proportion of E's in the English language was 0.12. Okay, this is, remember, the same problem that we did last time. And got a sample proportion of 13.5% from a sample of 876 letters. So he got 876 letters, and from there, only 13.5% of them had the letter E in it, okay, in those letters. So what we want to figure out, since I don't know what P is, right, we are assuming that this is P. We don't really know. This is something that Morse believes, something that he probably dreamt of, right? So we want to go ahead and say, okay, so based on the sample that I got, right, I want to figure out a 95% confidence interval. So I want to be 95% confident, right, uh, for the proportion of E's in the book. So whatever book he was using, or I don't care, uh, whatever. For the proportion of E's, so I don't even worry about this book. I don't even know why I wrote it. For the proportion of E's that he sampled. Okay, so whenever you want to figure out confidence intervals for proportion, that's a keyword that you want to figure out, that you want to um, take note of. Keyword is confidence interval. So I'm going to write CI for proportion. So whenever you see that word, you should immediately be thinking, I am going to use that formula that I had. So the formula, right, is P hat minus Z star square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n and then p hat plus z star square root of p hat 1 minus p hat divided by n okay that's what i have so i'm going to use this formula so i just need to figure out what is my lower bound and what is my upper bound okay now what's p hat what is my sample proportion well that one we already know what it is sample proportion was 13.5. So make sure that you don't put it as a percent. Make sure that you put it as a decimal. So this is 0.135. What is my Z star? Well, we know that it's 95%, right? So let's go back to our table. What did we write down? 95% corresponds with a 1.96. So Z star is 1.96. So this equals 1.96. Okay, what is my value of n? And in this case, it's just equal to 876. Okay, so all we got to do now is just go ahead and plug it in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the my lower bound. So we know p hat minus z star square root of p hat 1 minus p hat divided by n. This is going to equal to 0 0.135 minus z star 1.96 square root of um, 0.135, 1 minus 0.135, uh, divided by 876. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and put this in our calculator. Now, this is where it's hard because sometimes putting it in our calculator can be a little bit um, difficult. So, I used my TI-36 last time. Now, I'm going to use my TI-84. Okay. So, I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so that hopefully this black and white didn't, didn't mess everything up. So let's go ahead and put it in. So 0.135 minus 1.96. Now let's take the square root. The square root of, now we have to be very careful here, right? Because we don't want to close the parentheses way too early. Okay, we want to close them at the end. So 0.135, then parenthesis, 1 minus 0.135. 
end the parenthesis. So this parenthesis is going to end this parenthesis, right? I still haven't ended the square root one, divided by 876. End the parenthesis now. So this parenthesis now is going to end the square root. So take, keep track of that, okay? I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and I'm going to write 0 0.112. That is my lower bound, okay? Now what I got to do is I got to write the other one. P hat plus Z star square root of P hat 1 minus P hat divided by N. So everything is the same. Just notice that the only thing that's different now is that now this is a plus. Okay, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to plug this whole thing in there. Now, something really cool that you can do in this calculator, right? You can always press second enter, right? So if I press second enter, what's going to happen, I'm going to, it's basically copies, paste this solution and, or whatever I typed in before in here. And I can just go up here and just change the minus to a plus. Okay, and all I just did was I press second and then enter. Okay, and what I get is point approximately point one five eight. Right, that's what I got. So my interval, I am ninety five percent confident that the true value is going to be between zero point one one two and zero point one five eight. If I do this in a percentage, it will be between eleven point two percent and 15.8%. That's basically what it is. So usually we interpret this, and the way that we interpret this is the following. We are, how much percentage? 95% confident that the true value or the true proportion lies between 0 0.112 and 0 0.158. That's all it means, right? So we are 95% confident that the true value, the true proportion is between these two percentages, right? So if we look back, right, it says, is the proportion of E's consistent with Morse's 0.12? Well, Morse thought that the, the proportion of E's in the English language was 12%, right, 0.12. Well, is that consistent? Does our interval contain that 12%? It does. 12% is between there. So Morse can actually be correct because we, if we are 95% confident that the true proportion lies between these two numbers and Morse said that it was 12%, right, well, Morse is kind of on the right track. So, yes, it is consistent. It is consistent, okay? So he was consistent in all that, okay? So, um, so yeah, the, if, if it wasn't consistent, if let's say Morse in, initially, initially thought that it was 10%, well, this confidence interval that we just obtained didn't capture that 10%, so no, it wouldn't be consistent. So that's not correct, okay? So in the next video, I'm going to give you one more example on confidence intervals, okay?